the heat is on, although I can't exactly complain about it. Temperatures remaining mostly in the mid-90s across Texas and a few showers between San Antonio, Houston, and Beaumont. However, we do have some big-time heat across other parts of the country. Let's see what's happening on the surface map. Here's conditions late this afternoon across the United States. New push of cold air coming into the West Coast, but that's not going to do very much for California because those temperatures will be coming up rapidly over the next couple days in the San Joaquin Valley. Very warm conditions in the southwestern U.S. We got 111 at Vegas, 113 at Phoenix, and 114 at Yuma. Those are not close to any all-time records. However, we were watching Grand Junction. All-time record for them is 106. They had been forecasting 105, but it looks like we're only up to 103 this afternoon. Some very hot conditions in Montana with downslope winds ahead of this low pressure system. We've got 102 at Billings. Glasgow reached 102. That's breaking a record for the date. Jordan got up to 108. They're located right there in Miles City. Right around there got up to 107. And Sheridan, Wyoming, out in this area, also got up to 107. And also Glasgow, Montana, their radio sound last night, or actually this morning, broke the all-time record, 5,900 meters. And the old record was 5,854. And that's because of that very strong ridge. There's what it looked like this morning. Upper level high located right there. 500 millibar field bringing the 590 line right up there, breaking that record at Glasgow. And obviously this ridge is phenomenally strong for this time of year. So anywhere from the southwestern U.S. up to the Canadian prairies getting very hot temperatures. But not too far to the west, there's the polar front jet bringing some of that Pacific energy up into the Northwestern states and British Columbia. That's going to be a jet max right there in Northern California. And the jet comes around the other side through the Great Lakes into the Carolinas. And not only Montana and the southwestern U.S. getting some hot temperatures up in Alaska. It's kind of off the edge. We'll, we'll go to another map shortly, but there it is. Uh, Dawson with 81 degrees, Fort Yukon with 83, and Old Crow Yukon with 81. Those aren't records, but it is quite warm in that area. And just enough moisture, low 40s dew points to get some high-based storms going in this area here. That's the interior valleys of Alaska. Here's the Yukon pick a different color there. There's the Yukon. There's Alaska. Fairbanks is going to be kind of in this area here. The town of Toke right about there and Dawson up in here. So a lot of the heat is focused in that region up to the top. And as you can see, cumulus gets going during the afternoon. Some towers starting to form, but again, these are going to be kind of high based. They were talking about winds and some hail in the Fairbanks forecast discussion. And SPC does not cover Alaska. They leave watches and outlooks and all that kind of thing up to the local offices in Alaska. And last time I checked, there was nothing in effect for the state. There's a slightly different picture there at Aviation Weather Center. And it's not just Old Crow, Yukon, but also the north coast of Yukon getting 81 with some downslope from the mountainous terrain inland. Look at that, 79 on the coast of Yukon. And if we pan up the coast, 66, I think that's going to be Barter Island, and also Dead Horse, 66 degrees. We got 75 at that station. It's going to be Point Thompson. I haven't heard of that one. And going up the coast to Barrow, 40 degrees. So finally, we get some relief from that heat due to the flow coming off of the Chukchi Sea. And returning to the southwestern U.S., let's check out those forecast temperatures. Now, I do like these products because these are the official final weather service forecasts. These are not generated by models. The models do assist with this. But ultimately, these numbers here come from a human forecaster. 
And you can see 117 forecast at Phoenix for today. For tomorrow, 116, a little bit cooler there at Phoenix, but you're going to see the heat spreading into the San Joaquin Valley coming up to 102 at Sacramento, and it gets worse for Thursday. 109 at Sacramento, 108 at Phoenix and Bakersfield, and even worse in some areas for Friday coming up to 110 at Fresno and Bakersfield. 113 still roasting there at Vegas and still sizzling at Phoenix with 118. And Tucson also coming in with 112. Saturday the heat does relax a little bit but continued going in the San Joaquin Valley. And looks like maybe by Sunday things start tapering off just a bit. And we got stuff going on out in the Gulf. We got this Possible tropical depression coming together. If this is a named storm, it's going to be Claudette. The forecast on that, pretty much reaching up into the western gulf there towards Louisiana. The GFS and the European model have been consistent, bringing that somewhere between Lake Charles and New Orleans. And we can get right down to business and look at the forecast there. You're going to be looking down on the Bay of Campeche, down to the south. There it comes, kind of a disorganized, depressed area of convection. And that comes north, pressures 1004, 1005. That's probably going to be in the tropical depression range, but it does work its way northward towards Lake Charles, bringing spiral bands into Louisiana. And we'll give you the wind field very quickly. This is sustained winds. This is not gusts. But as that approaches the coast, it looks like the highest values. I'm seeing about 20 knots, maybe 30, up to the north towards the Galveston area. That circulation looks to be coming right into the Beaumont area, so maybe a bit of a westward jog on that track coming inland on Saturday. And the European model, always well worth looking at. Likewise, going for a western track on this thing. So we've seen a shift here, and it's got the highest winds on the northeast and east side. And that looks to be about 25, yeah, about 25 knots. So this is going to be either a weak tropical storm, tropical storm Claudette, or a tropical depression. But again, this has not been officially named. That's just kind of a taste of what's coming. And here's what we're looking at as far as rainfall. And it's moving progressively inland, so only dumping about four to six inches there. However, that's still a ways off, so we will have to keep an eye on that for next week in case things slow down. And if that happens, we would get an even higher rainfall total. And SPC, what's going on there? Fortunately, not very much. Looks like some high base storms in the high plains associated with that Bear Clinic system in Montana. And due to that strong downslope, this is probably going to be associated with high LCLs and high bases. Further to the west, this is probably going to be more of a cold core system around the Spokane region. Already got storms going in that area. And then in the Gulf Coast region, some of those frontal boundaries appear to be stalling out on the coast. So they got marginal risk out for that. And a severe thunderstorm watch for the Carolinas. Looks like the one in North Carolina might have expired. And we're left with a watch in South Carolina. Looks like that's all moving offshore at this time. And then further to the north, a marginal risk associated with a Included system, as best as what I could tell. And that's up there in Boston, New Hampshire, and western Maine. Storm reports, pretty clear. Confined mostly to wind along the Gulf Coast and up there in New Hampshire. And you've seen Texas already, so let's shift eastward. And there's how the situation is looking. Obviously, we have a boundary and flow working southward. A couple of uh, probably spectacular towers going up in eastern Alabama and central Mississippi. 
and there they go. And you can see that the air mass back behind it is relatively devoid of cumulus. So a bit of drying and a bit of cool air advection coming southward. In Florida, always busy. This time of year, June and July, very wet. You get that interaction of sea breezes and looks like we've got the front coming in from the north and it looks like a weak segment of a jet coming out of the Gulf. You can see that flow there in the Cirrus. Looks like it's moving about 30 or 40 knots. So it's providing a little bit of shear in the environment. So a lot of good ingredients for storms and of course the 70 degree dew point readings across the state. So probably this time of year, you're going to get uh, drenched going to Disney World. And a quick look at New England showing westerly flow. And this looks very much like a cold air advection pattern. I do see on the coast of Maine, very at the very beginning, you can see what looks like kind of a tropical, maybe some a remnant of maybe a tropical air mass right there in the Portland Augusta area. Looks like that's made short work of by this convection moving through the area. And one last line of storms moving into northwestern New Hampshire. A few storms going up in Colorado from the Palmer Divide down the Sangre de Cristos. And we can see some smoke in the Intermountain region right there. That might be some of the Smoke coming from the telegraph fires probably worked around that upper level high, which is centered in the Four Corners area. And it looks like that fire is still going. That's going to be it right there. And these storms are always a problem because they can touch off wildfires from lightning strikes. That's always a problem this time of year, especially when the vegetation is dry like it is right now. Quick look at California shows no trace of that surface front that we analyzed. It's going to be a dry front and not very much left of it. So the air mass going through extensive modification with that sun beating down on the ground right there. And looks like some bad news in Montana. Not only the heat, but it appears some large wildfires are going southwest of Billings and somewhere around the maybe Helena area right there. Maybe we can zoom in on that. But before we do, that looks like the cold core system there in Washington and Oregon. The storms not particularly strong, but likely dumping some showers in that region. And let's zoom in on this stuff in Montana because it looks like it is quite vigorous. Yep, there we go. There's a close up look at that fire. That's going to be quite a smoke plume. Looks like it's at least 100 miles long, maybe 10 miles wide. And the GO satellite does have special sensors for detecting wildfires. And you can see that hot spot right there. So no doubt that that was being observed right around the time the fire got going. And there's the highways and counties. Billings is located right there, so that's going to be about 50 miles southwest of there. And there's the other fire. You can see it with that hot spot right there. And Great Falls located right there, and I think Helena is somewhere in there. So that's going to be just off to the southeast. And there's what the terrain looks like. There's Helena, Montana. And this appears to be a TFR for that fire. Check that out there. Yep, to provide a safe environment for firefighting aircraft operations. So that's going to be just south of Mount Edith and looks like maybe about 15 miles east of Townsend, Montana. So I guess that's not a particularly inhabited area but hopefully they get control of that fire soon. And I think that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. I do want to thank our supporters, people like Norman Barnett, Fred Reamer, Brian Schrader, Patrice Brown, Grant Leite, Daniel Park. Thank you very much for your support. And 
I did get a message from Austin Haig. He reports, we're baking here in Tucson, sky filled with smoke from the Telegraph, Arizona fire. It blew up at 3 a.m. today and has not slowed down since. That was written last night, so he's talking about 3 a.m. yesterday. He says, I don't know if there will be much left in the Pinal Mountains with the way this fire has been scorching everything and how dry we are. Anyway, hope Arizona gets a little bit of relief there. All right, take care and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.